This is Joshua. He's the newest member of our family. Right now I'm educating him on certain do's and don'ts, like uh, not eating toilet paper, not playing in the laundry hamper, and certainly not barking at the nice man across the street when he's out gardening. But you know, anyone who has a dog knows that getting the pooch to understand the uh, rights and wrongs of life takes some time. Mortgage professionals have their own challenge today, uh, not about people eating toilet paper, of course, but there are an increasing number of folks who are under the belief that renting is more economically feasible than home ownership. Now, how do you convince these people otherwise? For that, we recently met with Bob Simone. He runs Better Living Real Estate out of Foxborough, Massachusetts. This is his ideas. Where are you going? Bob Simone, in today's real estate market, there are a lot of folks that are under the impression that it uh, makes more sense economically to be renting instead of buying. How do you answer people who have that train of thought? Well, during the recession, that uh, the thought started to surface, and it had to do with the the uh, declining, you know, value of property. Uh, so there was a, a fear factor that developed. I think now, post recession, we're starting to see more of a normalized real estate market appear, and as a result, we're starting to see the shift into equity and wealth building. So as people start to get more confident that real estate as an investment is stabilized, that you have the ability to start to build equity and wealth again as part of a, a family asset or, or wealth building uh, plan in conjunction with you know other types of investments, we're starting to see the shift away from you know basically paying the landlord's mortgage into deciding to pay their own mortgage and, and kind of build their own um, equity and nest egg. So uh, I think that real estate's always been a part of the American dream. Uh, it's been uh, more than uh, just a roof over your head. It's been about owning something. And I think we're seeing that come back in. And because the uh, rents had escalated, uh, we're seeing now people looking at the cost of rent in a particular market versus the cost of a very low percentage rate mortgage. And we're finding that you know, it may, may be a matter of only a few hundred dollars difference. So for that difference, people are saying, I might as well invest in myself. Some people might also be concerned with the, uh, the QM rules, feeling that uh, their credit isn't good enough to qualify for a mortgage. How do you answer those concerns? Our belief is that uh, as a real estate brokerage, our teammate and ally is a mortgage company, a lender, and we coach our buyers that are coming in, uh, whether they're uh, getting referred in or finding us through uh, our online presence or maybe meeting them at an open house. Uh, when they have those type of questions, the easiest way to get over the fear and to get really accurate answers is to speak to one of the lending institutions that we're you know, quite commonly recommending to them. There are also programs out there uh, through FHA or some of the other government agencies and state agencies too that could assist uh, people to get mortgages if they don't have pristine credit. Is that correct? It is. And you know what we find is that most of the consumers aren't aware of all the programs available. Uh, in certain markets uh, in, in our local area here, you know, you have USDA loan products. And when I talk to buyers about USDA, they don't have any idea that they might be able to take advantage of a loan program through that government organization. Um, FHA, which I think is a, a loan that people commonly hear about, um, still isn't really widely understood by a lot of people. And with some of the regulation changes and, and compliance changes, um, again, it's important for the buyers as well as our own real estate agents at our brokerage to really have a great working relationship with people in the lending community so that we can break down the myths, get accurate answers, and really spend more time helping people get into homes. But we'll just go back to USDA for a minute, because that's the United States Department of Agriculture. I guess some people might think that uh, those are farm loans or for rural areas, but that's not entirely the case. It isn't. Uh, so when you're dealing with any of these loan programs, you have to see uh, what limitations and restrictions there are. But remember, loan programs uh, have always been developed so that it, it is able to get money into the hands of home buyers and real estate consumers. So we find that the, the myth of these limitations, oh, maybe this particular town may not qualify, or maybe I might not qualify due to credit or income or other variables, um, oftentimes those are really myths. Uh, we, we joke around about the, uh, the person that's getting advice from the person in the next cubicle and you know all of the non-professionals who dispense advice freely. 
what we believe is that uh, by getting information from mortgage professionals, from real estate professionals, uh, people are going to learn more about some of the programs that are coming out, some of the changes maybe, and that breaks the myth cycle and actually helps improve the ability for people to get into the right home for themselves. What about uh, a lot of the so-called millennials? There's a major concern that because of student loan debt, uh, many people in their 20s or even their early 30s uh, can't qualify for a home and they probably won't for many years until their student loans are paid off. Uh, the, the free market system tends to adjust to the economic variables. So when we talk about people getting employment, having debt, uh, we find that the free market tends to accommodate that and find ways to solve that. Uh, we aren't seeing a lot of people that have good credit and that have employment uh, not able to get into property. What we're finding is that we have to reset their expectations of what type of property they're going to get into. So for instance, someone who may have grown up in a three bedroom colonial and they said, gee, when I grow up I want to be able to buy that same colonial that I grew up in. Uh, sometimes we need to reset their expectations and maybe we'll start them with a two bedroom ranch or you know a condominium and what we try to do is, is educate them on the idea that real estate is something that you can move into and out of so that in the different changes and time periods of your life you can use real estate as a really positive place to be able to enjoy an urban environment when you know you're, you're maybe younger and, and wanting to be kind of out in the scene or um, you know when you get married and you know have children and, and looking for that family neighborhood uh, you know you're, you're changing your real estate for that now all of those different times of life uh, have to do with different economic positions that people are in uh, the idea of, of saving money has come back into vogue and what we're finding is that with our brokerage in particular we team our clients up with not only mortgage professionals but also financial professionals so that they're getting a combination of good mortgage advice, good real estate advice, good financial planning and retirement planning advice which will lead to paying off that type of debt and understanding how to do it the right way. This might seem a bit blasphemous but are there some people who are just not right for home ownership? Well I think you know home ownership comes with responsibility right and so we saw um, a lot of people that uh, were taking loans and not really thinking ahead as to how I'm going to pay that loan back. So we look at a lot of the speculation that we saw in the market. I think a lot of that is, is now um, kind of been rethought. We don't see consumers in as, as aggressive a speculative mode. Um, and that means that the responsibility has come back into the consumer's uh, mindset. Uh, sure, there are always going to be a certain amount of people that get into trouble uh, because they overextend themselves, whether it's in the mortgage, uh, credit cards, or other consumer debt. Uh, those are the folks that may really do better renting. Uh, that'll be a decision they have to make, and hopefully when they're sitting down with the professionals that help them make those decisions, they're able to really take a, a strong look at you know what their uh, credit history is and what their payment history is and give them the right advice. So what do you think of that? Hmm? The Housing Show airs every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and can be viewed exclusively on MortgageNewsNetwork.com.